Hi there! I'm making a YouTube video showing the results of what happens when I play with dangerous chemicals. So if I get myself killed, then you'll know what happened. Then again, if you're watching this video on YouTube, that must mean I was successful because otherwise I never would have uploaded this video there. So that takes some of the suspense out of it. Of course, as I'm recording this, I don't know what's going to happen, so you'll be finding out at the same time as me. As for what this getup is all about, this is so that I can safely build my very first lye cleaning solution for cleaning antique cast iron. It's worth the effort to restore the kind of uh, antique treasure a person might only come across once in their lives. A Griswold number 14 cast iron skillet. Based on the logo on the bottom, this pan here dates to around the 1920s, so that makes it about 90 years old as of today, July 10, 2013. Uh, it measures about 15 and a half inches across, across the top, and I found it at an antique store in New York. And as I said, when you come across a once-in-a-lifetime find like this, you really don't want to say no to the opportunity. So I did, and now I get to clean it up and make it ready for cooking. It's covered with some sticky buildup and old seasoning, and that's why I built my first lye cleaning tank for it. Uh, I'm using drain cleaner that consists of 100% sodium hydroxide for my lye, and I have a plastic tub filled with just over 10 gallons of water. As anyone who uses lye knows, uh, you must always add the water to the tank first, then add the lye to the water. Never add water to lye or the results will be bad. As it is, I'm wearing this protective gear just in case something happens. So, let's take a look and see what happens. Well, that was easy. Let's see what happens in about a week. It's been four days since those cast iron pans went into the lye, and I've been told that should be more than enough time to clean them up. So, let's take a look at what's happened so far. I have another tub of water, and I'll be mixing regular vinegar into it. Uh, this will neutralize the lye so that I can handle the pans with my hands and wash them off in the sink. I don't have the face mask on this time because it turned out the lye solution produced far less fumes than uh, oven cleaner. Wow, something happened. Right off. 
nice. I don't have to do anything at all. Wagner Ware Chef Skillet. Um, there is no logo there saying made in USA, so this would have to date from the 1950s. I didn't know they made them back then. Uh, chef Skillet has a good rounded edge or uh, side to it as opposed to the usual straight sides you see in most pans. So uh, this is really good for sauteing and omelets. Ooh. And what's more, it, uh, it has was probably the first appearance of this uh, redesigned um, handle with a thumb grip. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm, I'm going to get a lot of use out of this one. Mm -hmm. I've never seen anything like this before. There's absolutely no marking on it whatsoever. No stamp, no nothing. And if we look at the front side, there is a very, very faint impression that could be, I suppose, a letter R number five on it. But that's the only marking on this at all. Hmm. I'd have to guess, like the uh, Wagner, that uh, this was probably from the 1950s. Otherwise, it would say made in, I bet it's probably made in Taiwan, in fact. <laughs> and it's actually very deep for a uh, pan of this size. And now, for the Griswold. Aha! A Griswold cast iron skillet, size 14, Erie, Pennsylvania, USA. 
This is a large logo pen, even though, uh, <laughs> admittedly, with a pen of this size, that logo doesn't look very large. And that does date it to around the 1920s or so. This is not going to sit uselessly as uh, just a display piece. I'm going to be cooking with this, and I'm going to be cooking a lot. <laughs> this definitely made it all worth it. And I'm very much impressed by uh, how well the, the lie worked. Well, all I can say now is, thank you very much for watching.